So as we can see here, most of the plastic has now made its way <clears throat> out of the feed chamber. We're still seeing some cups fall down here. So I'll probably let it continue to spin. Ladies and gentlemen, I am loading in plastic into my plastic into fuel reactor while it is running for the first time ever. This is the first ever homemade, continuous microwave pyrolysis reactor in history right here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a last time to turn some plastic into fuel. We are back in business, back in operation. The first run of 2025 with the continuous microwave pyrolysis reactor. Let's go ahead and get plastic loaded in this piece. I'll be honest guys, it seems like YouTube is shadow banning me. Some videos barely break 5k views with over 300,000 real subscribers. So if you guys love what I do and you support me, please like the video, subscribe and watch to the end. It will help me so much. Let's break through this shadow ban and push to the world that we can turn plastic into fuel. She is alive. Beauty and the beast. The beautiful beast. Alive for the first time in the year. Now I'm just kind of nervous on how the continuous speed is going to do now that she is going to be hot under vacuum, flammable vapors inside, but nonetheless we are turning plastic into fuel with the upgraded continuous, say it with me, microwave pyrolysis reactor baby. So far all looks good, this is the pressure inside the main chamber, as you can see there's some slow drops but nothing crazy so everything is going good and the temperatures as you can see look good screen over here all magnetrons are on and we are currently pulling 8,300 watts at full power operation I always forget to turn this darn timer on we're probably about 10 minutes in but um, I just started it obviously, but 10 minutes in we can already see the sight glass is starting to fog up a little bit This sight glass here is starting to fog up. That means that whatever is in the chamber, which is plastic is uh, Breaking down under the microwave degradation and it's releasing water vapor and then some of its vapor as well But mainly in the beginning is going to be mostly water vapor. That's the first thing that comes off All right, so I told you we're 10 minutes behind so we're about 20 minutes in See, the pressure is at a negative three PSI. Now, I know a lot of people are probably confused by that metric or this unit, and I'm confused by it too, okay? I don't know why this sensor doesn't let me do inches of mercury. Uh, instead, it lets me do negative PSI and a few other weird things, but whatever. Um, nonetheless, 20 minutes in, and the once cloudy sight glasses are now super cloudy, but look at that zoom in. Droplets of moisture. That's condensation, okay? Look down here. That's, once again, I told you this was water vapor, and you can very clearly see water forming. So, you know, here's how this process works when it comes to us extracting the liquid oils out of the plastic. It doesn't matter what liquid is coming over from these uh, this condenser here. As long as there's liquid forming, whether that's water or liquid plastic oil, uh, it's going to, it's condensate. So, since we see water, we know for a fact it's only a matter of time, once the machine heats up enough, we are going to see plastic uh, condensate come over, the plastic crude oil. About 27 minutes in, you see the pressure drop even more, because of course, the negative pressure would drop as vapors are filling up the space, because that's the opposite of having po uh, negative pressure, right? More molecules occupying a space or a volume is the opposite of having no molecules occupy a volume, which is what negative pressure is. So anyway, vapors are once again forming a great, you can see in this big sight glass here, you can actually see some movement. It's a little bit tough on camera, but there's some vapors moving throughout this. And um, these sight glasses over here, man, I love sight glasses so much. Give a shout out to sight glasses. Look at how many uh, moisture, how much moisture is, is forming? Uh, uh, quite a good bit of moisture formation, very cloudy. So any moment now, uh, there probably is already oil inside the machine, 
refluxing, meaning it's condensing on the sides of the walls and, and then staying in the chamber. But soon we'll see oils actually coming over. But like I told you, water vapor is the first thing because water boils and starts to turn into steam at pretty low temperatures compared to when plastic actually breaks down and does the same thing. But then at the same time, microwaves actually end up affecting the plastic to such a degree where, uh, the, you know, microwaves don't discriminate with their heat. So unlike if I take a boil, uh, or if, if, if I were to boil a pot of water, right, all the water is going to be the same temperature at the same time. But when it comes to microwaves, they form hot, hot spots. So some bits of plastic might be heated up from pieces of plastic around it, while some pieces of plastic are literally heated up to like a thousand degrees right away because of the hot spots. And then it ends up radiating, radiating and conducting to cooler pieces of plastic, right? And that's how I can tell you for a fact there's definitely oils inside the body already, just refluxing because the, the walls of the whole chamber are so cold and so cool, right? 48 minutes in, you can see the pressure dropping even more, temperatures rising even more. We're getting the first bits of oil. You can kind of see it on the side of this. Uh, it's just at the bottom, but this one especially, this side glass here, you can see uh, some color down here. Obviously, there's a lot of water, but there's some color, and it's separate from the water. We know oil and water are different densities, so this separates the oils forming, and there's actually some heat to these pipes as well. Uh, these are actually condensers here. These have many holes within them, shotgun condensers, both of these pipes. So a lot of surface area between these two pipes to try to, you know, get as much heat exchanged as possible. So we are seeing oil. You can see definitely the color here, a little bit of yellow haze. There we go, actually a little stream of oil there. So we got oil going into the keg at this point, uh, less than an hour in. Looking great, temperatures are good. We have it insulated very well. Actually, I wanted to mention that this man way here at the front, it's actually kind of warm. This is insulated. You see there's a gap, but it's still warm to the touch. Not even warm, but hot. Like I can't hold my hand there longer than that. So this needs to be insulated even more because for me to feel that much heat coming through, that means that that is heat being lost. All right, it is that time of the year. We are an hour in, remember 10 minutes minus T minus 10, because I forgot to start it. But almost 200 degrees Celsius back body temperature. You can see the pressure we're at. Take a look over here at the sight glass. This pipe is starting to get quite warm, but most importantly, take a look at this. We have a consistent flow of oil or condensate, you could say. Um, very consistent flow. And now we are ready to load in some plastic. I want to see if in loading in plastic with that, shoot up. I would love to give a huge thank you to every single one of my Patreon members as well as my YouTube members. You guys help me so much. You make my project possible. And going on that point, if you would like to support what I do, I have recently launched my own natural products brand. It's called Jabaroma. You can go to jabaroma.com and you can get yourself some 100% natural and handmade products. I make every single product, no parabens, no chemicals, 100% natural, good stuff for you. Our flagship product and our best selling product is our 100% all natural deodorant, free of all chemicals, no aluminum, literally just four ingredients. Go to jabberoma.com and you can support this channel. 10% of all profits go to the reactor itself. And lastly, come next month, very soon, I'm going to be having a meet and greet in Texas. In Austin, Texas, it'll be a live meet and greet, a car meet, and I'll be doing a live fuel test on a modern vehicle and you'll be able to be there and see it in the flesh. You can go to naturejab.com slash meet to sign up for that. So I'll see you guys there. Thank you all for your support. And let's get back to the video. In order to load plastic into the machine, I need to vacuum it in through my vacuum loading system. So I have a shop back here that's connected up here and then it connects over here to this hose where we can suck the plastic in. Now I have to open this valve first so it can fall in from there, but this valve is closed right now and this valve is closed. So the whole reactor and machine is isolated from this entire chamber until I choose to open this valve down here. So let's go ahead and open this valve and load in some plastic. That's 
all the plastic I'm gonna load in for now because we're gonna start a little bit smaller to see how everything goes. But I turned the blades off because some plastic was starting to make its way over and fall into this sight glass. And it's gonna end up accumulating on the top of this valve. And we don't want it to stick together and get stuck so where when I open this valve, none of it falls in. You see, if I, well, if it's gonna fall now, you'll see what I mean. Okay, it's not falling now. Anyway, turn the blades off. But what we gotta do now, I'm gonna turn these up all the way to max speed. We gotta pull the vac, we gotta close this valve, then pull a vacuum on this entire chamber. And then, once the vacuum on this entire chamber is pulled, we can open this valve. There should be no change in pressure between this reactor chamber and this area. And then we can turn the blades on and load the plastic in. We can see here on my gauge, right now we are at a little under 10 inches of mercury. So now we will open this valve, turn the blades on and let the plastic fall in. So it appears the sight glass has gotten foggy, so I can't even tell the plastic is falling in right now. But I know it is because we can obviously see it in the blades up there, but it's just so foggy which I was not expecting to happen, but I guess it makes sense. We can't see it even, oh, I saw a little clump fall in just there. Ladies and gentlemen, I am loading in plastic into my plastic into fuel reactor while it is running for the first time ever. This is the first ever homemade, continuous microwave pyrolysis reactor in history right here. First ever. Look at the plastic falling in there as we speak before your eyes. There we go, just as envisioned. So as we can see here, most of the plastic has now made its way out of the feed chamber. We're still seeing some clumps fall down here. So I'll probably let it continue to spin. Remember, both chambers now are at the same pressure. So I can look at the screen and see we're at negative 1.3 PSI. That's across the board. Both chambers are close to the air and both chambers are the same pressure. So plastic is falling in. Uh, this side glass did get foggy, which is kind of defeats the point of being a side glass, but it's okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to leave this open for too long or else this will continue to get fat cloggy or cloudy up here and oils will start to make their way and condense up here on all types of nonsense. So we'll go ahead and turn these blades off and close it. But in terms of oil production, was my theory correct? I would say a resounding no. Uh, we don't see a spike in oil rising. But at the same time, let me turn on the main blades here inside the chamber uh, to agitate this plastic around that's being loaded in. We'll turn them on. As you can see, we're spinning and we gotta go ahead and get everything up to full power again. But everything went well. It was a little bit scary when this just kind of turned white all of a sudden and foggy. But everything is well. Everything is safe just as envisioned and just as practiced. We did it, baby. First time ever in history has a microwave pyrolysis reactor been made continuous at a homemade, home scale level by hand. First time ever in history right here. We made history today. Inside the reactor itself, let's see what it looks like. Oh wow, take a look at that. As you can see, all that's left of the plastic itself, well, is carbon, look at that. Is that plastic to you? No, that's just carbon and minerals, baby. Take a look at this level of carbonization right here. This is better than I even thought. Look at that, it's the dry powder, wow. Beautiful. I didn't even think it would carbonize that well. We didn't add all that much plastic, but this looks great. Amazing level quality carbon. You can tell by how dry and powdery it is because if there's still some residual oils left in there, 
it's not going to be really powdery and dry if there's residual liquid or oils because we only ran the machine for a few hours we didn't run it that long at all so it seems like the continuous feed system actually allows for <clears throat> better carbonization because instead of having so much plastic up front it's kind of added throughout the time of the machine running so it, it allows the plastic to more evenly break down